it's now time. The Boston drop just went live right the second. If you guys already know it's dropping, head on over, snag something before it sells out. This is the first tee we're dropping in black. Fast cars and freedom. I'll show you guys in detail how quality the back of this guy is. Look at that Evo, man. So sick. We also have it in army green. I think this is my favorite color combo. Dropping the hoodie, nice thick warm hoodie, storm gray hoodie. Here's the front and here's the back. Can't beat it. And we also have this design on a very high quality limited edition print. And if you guys want these things signed by yours truly, just leave a note in the order notes of your order. Last but not least, we do have the sticker packs available as well. Guys, I appreciate your support. Every order here in the domestic US, over 150 bucks, I, myself, am paying for shipping. Hope you guys love this drop as much as I do. First link down below, thank you. Let's get to work. I have a pretty solid game plan for today. And provided I have a part at the shop, the Evo motor can actually go back in the car today. So I ordered all of the parts yesterday for the Evo. Full spread of bearings, mains, rods, thrust, everything there. Just in case I decide to do the mains if I need to. We'll, we'll discuss that later on. Also ordered a rear main seal and that is the one part that is back ordered for three, two to three weeks. I'm trying to get this car done in the next two to three days. So that ain't gonna work. Now I'm, it's a 80% chance that I have a rear main for an Evo 8 or 9, a 4G at the shop. I typically have a lot of spare parts laying around, especially when it comes to seals and O-rings and that kind of stuff. So, I, like I said, 80% chance I have one there. If I don't have one there, what do you do? The dealer don't got one. Like I said, I overnighted one from MAP. That ain't gonna be in for three weeks, two to three weeks. And I guess we'll decipher later on if I don't have one, the next best action. But anyways, I said earlier today, a couple minutes ago, that the motor could go back in the car. Now the motor could go back in the car if I have a rear main seal. The bearings are actually gonna be here tomorrow, not today. So here is the easy route. Provided I don't need to do the mains. There's a lot of ifs today. And of course I'm not gonna rush it and do things that aren't proper. But if all the mains are beautiful, I can do the rod bearings very, very easily while the motor's in the car. So that would be the plan. Connect the motor with the trans in the T-case, drop it in the car, put the subframe back in. It'll be 99% done. As soon as bearings show up tomorrow, slap them rod bearings in, put the pan on, get it all sealed up, we're good to go. Like I said, there's a lot of ifs, but if uh, luck is on my side today, we'll be in the clear, and that excites me. Also, it's snowing. We haven't got snow in a while. It's been like a month. I don't see any harm in doing a little ripper for the boys. I almost took Bobby's snows off the Type R, but I'm glad I didn't. Come on, people. Why does no one know how to use an intersection? I go, you go, I go, you go. <laughs> that is unsafe. The first variable, the rear main seal, I have here at the shop. Beautiful. Now, next variable. I wanna take a peek at our mains. I don't need to pull the crank all the way out. If I just pull the girdle off, the main caps off, and all those are perfectly fine, we're in the clear. In order to do that, I do need to pull the timing cover off and release tension on the timing belt. Otherwise, I'm worried it's gonna put a little bit of tension on the crankshaft, which I don't want, of course. So, let's pop this here. Timing cover off.
Being that the power steering quit working, uh, was that yesterday? Randomly, I am just gonna go ahead and toss the new pump on while the motor's out. Because that was very bizarre. Quit working for a split second, shut the car off, fired it back up, back in action. That makes no sense to me. Hmm, the plot thickens. We have a weep underneath the timing cover. Now what's leaking is the question. <laughs> sure glad I pulled the timing cover off. It appears it's either valve cover or a cam seal both not a big deal whatsoever. I just don't like that it's leaking. It makes me feel like a non-quality mechanic. With the cam gears off, it should be fairly simple to see if it's a seal. It is a seal. All right. A little bit more invasive. I've gotta pop the valve cover. I don't have to, but to do it right, I want to pop the valve cover off. But now the question is, do we have a seal here? Surprisingly enough, I have two brand new OEM Evo 8 camshaft seals here. So instead of replacing one, of course I'll replace both. I do know these are not OEMs. I didn't have OEM at the time. I don't know if I ordered those after or what happened there, but these are blue and OEM's brown, of course. Well, let's do her. Let's pop this thing over. Let's pull off these 10 nuts right here. That'll give us access to the cap side of the bearing shells. We can take a look and see how they are. This is the last variable. If the mains are in great condition, like I am thinking they are, this motor will be in the car today. Not running, of course, but as soon as those rod bearings show up tomorrow, she will be running. So it won't quite clear the oil pump where the pickup bolt's on right here, but if I pop out the studs, then it should clear just fine. Okay, please come off now. There we go. These things are brand new. This was the last variable. Of course, you're gonna see a little bit of wear because there's a metal crankshaft spinning around in here. But the rule of thumb pretty much is if anything doesn't catch your fingernail, then you're in the clear. Bit of assembly lube on the bearings, and this thing can go back on. Alrighty, let's get the main retorqued with the ARP fastener lube. It's a final torque spec of 60 foot pounds. Now you wanna do, you wanna get to that final torque spec with three equal steps. So 20 pounds to start, and then 40 pounds, and then 60 pounds. Then a crisscross pattern starting from the middle working your way out. Feels like I just did this a couple miles ago. Oh wait, I did. I'm sure I could just thread a screw in, pull the cam seals out, put the new ones in, but 
in my opinion, it's not really the right way to go about it. The easiest way is going to be to pull these outer cam caps off. There is sealant on the edges here, so they're a little bit stuck down, but some persuasion, they'll come off. A little bit of lube on the new seals so they slide on how they should. Make sure they don't get caught up on anything. Something like that. This would be so much more difficult if the motor was in the car. So the new cam seals are on. We gotta apply a little bit of RTV to the outer edge of the cam caps. These cap bolts go to 15 foot-pounds. Now before I put the valve cover back on, I'm going to put the cam gears on because there's a hex on the camshaft so you can hold the cam and then torque the cam gear. Sixty-five foot-pounds on these cam gear bolts, and the valve cover can go back on. Let's get a timing belt back on this motor, and there's one more thing I want to fix on it real quick. One more issue that we keep having that I want to take care of while the motor's out of the car. All right, my friends, we now have a complete ready-to-go long block. I went ahead, got a new power the new power steering pump installed just because of that weird issue we had the other day i didn't want to run into that again i already had one here might as well slap it on right let's get her on the engine hoist the oil pan is only held on with two bolts right now just so debris didn't get in there the first thing that we need to do is i'm going to pop that oil pan back off when it's on the engine hoist and we need to get that rear main seal installed properly this time, I might add. The one thing I did want to build or finish up and fix while the engine is out of the car is that turbo return line. I do need the starter motor on in order to get that built properly. And of course, in order for the starter to be on, the transmission has to be bolted onto the motor. So we'll do that here in a sec. Okay, I'm gonna pop the pan off. Or at least down far enough to properly get this rear main seal on. Now I need to get this gasket surface cleaned up. I don't know if it was leaking from the actual seal or from the mating surface to the block. I guess either way, it doesn't really matter. It was leaking and we need to fix. Okay, that's cleaned, prepped, ready to rock. Now we need to do the same here. Brake cleaner plus a wire brush gets your ceiling mating surfaces nice and clean. All the old RTV off. Now it's not like a Evo 10 or a 4B11 where it's the whole plate that you replace. This one you gotta Physically pop the seal out. Get that cleaned as well. And then put the new seal in. Touch of grease or oil or just gotta put something on the, on the seal so it slides over the crank easy. Okay, now very carefully, 
apply our RTV. And just like that, the rear main can go on. Starter plate goes on, flywheel goes on, clutch goes on, transmission goes on, and we can build our return line once and for all. Too easy, man. Too freaking easy. Trans and engine are connected. Went ahead and tossed the starter on, and then down here I have about 15 different styles of fittings and whatnot. So we can go ahead and get this return line built properly so it fits and don't leak. I'm over these leaks, man. Over these freaking leaks. Alrighty, here's the line I ended up with. So out of the turbo is the adapter, 10 an adapter for Evos, to a straight 10 an to the braided hose, to another straight, to the super tight. I wanna say that's a 30 degree fitting. Now it's not your traditional fitting like this. It looks like that. So there she is completed. No kinks, no weird fitting stuff. That's gonna work perfect. I suppose it's about that time. Let's plop this thing back in the car. I'm not in a massive rush right now because, well, I'm not in any rush. Being that the rod bearings show up tomorrow. It sounds funny when we put the rod bearings in while the motor's in the car, but not a big deal at all. Will not be difficult. Not really, quote unquote, the wrong way of doing things. It's just how it's gotta be done this time. Cause I ain't got all week. So I'll get it mostly centered up in between the car, set it down on my towels, and then go ahead, lower the car down, lift the motor up, slop on the motor mounts. Just like we did a couple weeks ago. back a bit. Okay, looks about right. Motor mount number one is on. Now let's do the opposing side. With the motor and transmission back in the car, we are ready to start cranking, getting the rest of the stuff installed. We can pretty much get everything on besides the oil pan and the starter and the downpipe. I don't know how far I'm gonna make it. I have about 45 minutes left of working time tonight but let's start off with some stuff underneath. First up, we have our tea case. Okay, tea case is in. Let's see about this freaking subframe. Who I can me ask finagle it up there. I could use the hoist, but I could also use my, uh, muscles I've been trying to acquire. Come on, Devin, you're stronger than this. <clears throat> Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. This rear mount back here is always, I repeat always, the most annoying to get in, unless you do it 
but all the motor and the transmission are loose. Even still, it can be quite annoying. Let's see here. Ah, that's the sound of glory. That is done, done, done. Subframe is in. Let's start doing some random goodies. Here we have the drive shaft. Next up, let's do the axles. Get the knuckles connected back to the coilovers and get all that stuff, kind of stuff tidied up. As you can see, I put the camera down and I got right to work. Wiring is done, a lot of the lines are finished up, shifter cables, all the motor mounts, all the bell housing bolts. The list goes on and on. Pretty much all we have tomorrow, fluids, intake manifold, and some rod bearings. And this thing is getting fired up and driven on out of here tomorrow. Hopefully, our rear main don't leak and hopefully we're done with our issues.